Good afternoon, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, this we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Uh, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen so that we can eat well on a minimal income without leaving the property. Uh, and so lately I've been sharing a lot of what I do in the kitchen. Today I'm gonna show you what I do to make our own sausages and sausage mints for various different things. So I've already started the day off it's getting quite late actually but I still have to get this done so I started the day off I have three big roasts in the fridge that I showed in the shopping haul video which I'll put up in the corner wherever that goes about seven kilos each about a $50 roast each one of pork I've taken the skin off them as I showed in a pork video which I'll also link I take the skin off them and cook it over potatoes I've already done that with all three of them and while I was doing that I diced them all up into two kilo lots so now what I've done is I've pulled all my spices and stuff out onto the bench and I'm going to grab the two kilo bags of pork mints and I'm going to marinate each one uh, and then those bags are going to go in the fridge overnight and then tomorrow we'll do the mincing and the processing so I thought I'd bring you along for seasoning the bags of mints. Um, I think I've ended up with nine, maybe, about 18 kilos of uh, pork mints. Um, so I'm going to season them in a couple of different ways uh, to do sausages with. Um, also, we'll probably do some use some to make spring rolls um, and maybe some pork balls, like pork meatball type things, Asian style pork meatballs to use with the Asian plum sauce that I've just made, um, and breakfast sausage flavoring as well. So we can use them. We use a variety of the minces in a variety of ways. We eat them in sausages, like I put them in casing for sausages, or we fry it off and eat it in frittatas or anything like that. We also make uh, zuba Tuscana, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but they're soup, sausage potato soup, and we've got plenty of potatoes left from our harvest, so I might make a big batch of that up and can some probably, so we'll have sausage meat for that as well. So let me go and grab the bags out, they're in the fridge again. I'll grab a couple out at a time and we'll get them seasoned up and then put back in the fridge because it's still quite warm here it's probably I don't know 26 27 degrees um, and the flies are bad as usual so I'm going to pull them out two bags at a time and uh, we'll start seasoning them up if you see smoke in the background don't worry about it it's just the smoker roasting up a piece of that pork as well so I'll go and grab some bags and then I'll bring you down to the bench alrighty as you can see I've got a whole bunch of my oh, probably can't see because I've got that there now a whole bunch of my spices all sorted out here so I've got scales and all I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh the spices into the bags and mix them up in the bags. So I'm just going to tilt this fan up so it doesn't affect my scales. Now, first one I'm going to do is a pretty standard sort of a Italian type flavoured sausage that we really like. But I use a few different ingredients because we personalise it for ourselves. The whole point of doing this is that we can flavour it the way we like. So what I do with mine is it's two kilos of pork so we start off with 20 grams of salt and I've just gone over there because I wasn't thinking while I was doing it because I normally do it in four kilo lots a bit of salt, extra salt is not going to hurt we're going to use um, Italian seasoning 20 grams of that doesn't have to be precise it, my sausages never taste the same from one from one time to the next Then I've got smoked paprika which I'm using 20 grams of as well we've got some minced garlic I've just got the Kirkland minced garlic because it comes in a nice big packet and I'm going to use 120 grams of garlic in this one just like that and then I'm going to put cowboy candy so this is our home canned cowboy candy I don't know if you can see it very well there but um, small jars I've only got three of these jars left mind you so I use this in this particular mix and I use 60 grams I think is what I've got in my notes here Let's see how much I think it should be about half the thing here so around about half a four ounce jar and then mustard um, I don't have any homemade mustard made up at the moment but what I did was I ground up some 
mustard seeds and I'm going to use that. So I'm going to use 20 grams of dried mustard. I would normally use 40 grams of my whole grain mustard. I might So you can add some spice there if you want, cayenne um, or chili powder, uh, chili flakes or anything you want there. The mustard is normally enough. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper though. I don't have pepper written down for some reason, but I'm just going to add some fresh cracked pepper as well. And that'll up the heat a little bit there. So that one's just a really basic sort of a mix. I did miss something. What did I miss? Caramelized onion. So the other thing that we have is I have jars of caramelized onion. So I'm going to put some of that in here. Probably half this jar. About 100 grams. So that is just straight caramelized onion that I've canned and pressure canned. So there we go. And then I'm just going to drizzle a bit of Worcestershire sauce in because we like the flavour of the Worcestershire sauce. So that was about 20 grams of Worcestershire sauce. And that's it. So all I'm going to do is zip that up and then move it all around. Like that. I would normally do this in stainless steel bowls and just leave it in covered stainless steel bowls in the fridge but I wouldn't normally do this much at a time so I decided that Ziploc bags would be handier this time um, and then I'll just wash them out and use them again for next time I'll stick them I'll label them with what they were used for and then stick them in the freezer and then next time I do pork I will use them again. All right, so we're just going to mix this up really well. It still needs to be moved down the bottom, and then I'll move on. So I'll bring it back. Once you've got it mixed around a fair bit, if you let the air out, it makes it easier to then just massage all that seasoning in. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to go through the mincer, but that's pretty well covered. So this is just going to go back in the fridge. I'm going to grab a nickel and mark what it was, and then it's going to go in the fridge. And I'll move, um, I'll do the next one first and then I'll put them both in. Alright, so the next one I'm going to do has similar flavours as that one, but it doesn't have the Italian seasoning in it, which is, uh, so which gives it that little bit of different flavour. So again, it's two kilos of, of pork, so we do 20 grams of salt, except I won't go off over this time. No, still did slightly but you know and then we've got 40 grams of paprika so this one has a bit more paprika in it and then this one has some sage so this is like a save I suppose a savory uh, breakfast sausage this one it's 20 grams of sage uh, we've got we're using I'm using powdered garlic in this one instead of fresh garlic and it's 20 grams of powdered garlic so we just like having these different flavor profiles like powdered garlic has much different has a much different flavor to minced garlic in it it's nowhere near as sharp and harsh uh, 40 grams of mustard again i don't have any mustard made up i will have to do that up soon and i'll share that video when i do it i make a whole bunch of different mustards up myself so i'm just going to do 20 grams of the mustard the ground mustard seeds which is just that I just grind ground up mustard seeds on my own like that and then uh, caramelized onion again so I'm gonna put the rest of this jar in this one which hint, gives it that onion flavor but gives it a little bit of sweetness as well that's my last jar of caramelized onions too so I'm gonna have to do more of those and then I use mushroom powder so I dehydrate mushrooms in the dehydrator and then I powder them in my little Tribest blender and I use the, the powder in my uh, 
sausages. So 15 grams of dried mushroom. Which is all that. And then I'm going to put a slug of water shear in this one as well. And there we go. Now I'm going to mix this one up. And there we go. So I'm just going to grab my Nico to label these to go back in the fridge. Alrighty, so I've just labelled them like so. And they're going to go in the fridge. And then I'll pull the next ones out. Alright, so I do a sweet breakfast sausage style. And this one's in... I haven't converted this one to weight yet. It's all in spoonfuls. So it's... Uh, and it's from an American site because breakfast sausage is more American than Australian. So it's five pounds of pork and then two tablespoons of brown sugar this is the homemade brown sugar that I showed the other day it is five teaspoons of sage and five teaspoons of salt Two teaspoons of pepper, teaspoon of garlic, teaspoon of thyme. Now if they use pepper flakes, I just use a little bit of my mustard powder because I like the depth of flavour that it gives as well as the little bit of heat. So I'm just using half a generous half a teaspoon, pinch of cayenne. And each one and I'm going to use a drizzle of maple into each. Just like that. Alrighty, and then I'm gonna mix these up. So this is my sweet breakfast style sausage. Alrighty, in the last three bags, I'm gonna go really simple. I'm going to use uh, garlic, salt, pepper, paprika, some smoke powder, basically. So I'm gonna go really heavy on the garlic all right let's have a look at so i did 120 grams is what i do in that other batch of sausage and it's not particularly strong so let's go 200 of garlic nice and strong i'm going to use some smoke powder I have some smoke powder here um, and it said the says starting point of 0.05 percent up to a maximum of 0.3 so we've got two kilos of meat 0.05% is 10 grams, so I'm just going to stick to 10 grams. And then I'm going to add, I've got my cowboy candy open, so I'm actually going to add half a jar of that. I should, I'm lucky I'm recording this because I always forget to take notes. So I've got that one open, so I'm going to do half a can of, half jar of cowboy candy in each one because I've got a second one open here as well. Alright, just ground some fresh peppercorns up there and I'm going to use a tablespoon in each because we want that pepper and garlic to come through so we're heavily doing the garlic so it was garlic pepper cowboy candy I'm going to do some paprika because I'm just going to put a tablespoon in each one it'll give it good color as well And then salt. It's the last thing. There we go. So I'm going to mix them up and that's all of them done. So I will put them all in the fridge and then I'll bring you back tomorrow when we start grinding them. Alrighty, next morning. So all the, all the pork has been marinating overnight and I'm going to start mincing it. Now I don't want to have to clean the utensils between each flavour so I'm just going to mince them in a in an order that makes sense of the flavors tend to pass each other so i'm going to start with the sweet stuff first uh, and get it done and then i'll pick the next one to do uh, probably the savory breakfast um, because they're similar flavors and then move through and uh, do them in an order that makes sense that if the flavors overlap then that's fine so i use my kitchenaid and the kitchenaid works great I'd really like something more high powered but it takes more power so the KitchenAid works for the moment it um, does overheat though so you have to be careful 
with that, uh, main, monitor the temperature of the, the machine and stuff like that. So all I do is I shove it all in. We have we use the large grinding um, size because uh, we prefer that, and we just feed it through, slow and steady, stopping when needed, going when we can. Speed 4 is what I've read is optimal, seems to go through at a good pace at that. You want to keep everything as cold as possible so you don't want anything out of the fridge for too long. Uh, if it's really hot out then you want to refrigerate the grinder and stuff as well. This is the first four kilos and this is the sweet breakfast sausage. I decided to clean the grinder out after this because I'm going to cook some breakfast with some of this and because it's got maple syrup in it it's just attracting too many flies so I don't want to leave the grinder sitting there with any bits in it for the flies so I am pulled that all off and I'm going to clean that one up. I'm going to cook some breakfast, cook some of this up and have some breakfast and then I'll come back to do the next lot. Alrighty, so next I'm going to do the mushroom mix and then I'll do the Italian mix and then I'm going to do the smoky garlic. I think that's going to be the range. I'm going to try and get it all done now without cleaning in between. We've had breakfast. I forgot to film it, but I've got photos of it, so I'll put that in the thing. And then we'll just get through the rest of this meat, and then we'll have to sort out the uh, putting it in casings and things like that. Alright, so here we go. This is the Italian mix. Let's find that right spot on the Italian mix and the mushroom mix. Two kilos of each of those done as well. Two-ish kilos. So I'm going to cover these and stick them in the fridge to stay cool. And then I'm going to pull the garlic, smoky garlic out and get that started as well. Alright, minced up all the pork, got all the different flavours and now we're going to start stuffing some sausages. So we bought this uh, sausage stuffer rather than using the KitchenAid because it just took too long to do in the KitchenAid. So this one has a five kilo popper so we can put large amounts of meat in at a time and then uh, fill the sausage casings. All right then so this is the tube here that stuffs the sausages. We've got um, casings that I've had soaking so we just need to feed them on to the find an end and then feed them onto the tube. Okay, just an end. These are sheet casings from Casing Boutique. I probably wouldn't buy this size next time, I'd probably go slightly thinner. 
Um, I think these are a 32, I'd probably go to a 28. Find these just a little bit thick for our usage. The sausages end up just a little bit too large. Alright, we find this very much a two-person job. You have to get the air out first until the meat starts coming through, a little bit of extra. And then you want to yep, put some pressure against the, the tube as it comes through. I find that the easiest way to get a, a consistently even sizing in the skin. There we go, so that's how quick it is with the this sausage stuffer. I won't say it's easy, but it's definitely quicker than the KitchenAid. Uh, and then we just pull the plunger back up, tip the hopper, and refill it. Alright, so the camera had to be in a weird angle to do that, so I'm not sure how well um, it all came across, but you know, I'll see when I'm editing. So that's what we've done. So that was all the casings that I had soaked and that were usable at the moment. So we'll do other things with the rest of the meat. This will be the sausages for this batch. So we've got the mushroom, the Italian and garlic. And now they're in long strings and we have to put them into smaller pieces so we just tie the ends off whatever is there and we'll snip them off afterwards and you take them to wherever you want to take them and you twist now as you twist them you want to twist opposite directions cool so as you twist them you want to twist them opposite directions so you're not untwisting the one prior like that backwards, forwards. Now I'm not particularly precise in the sizing, I just do guesstimates and move the meat as I'm going. So you sometimes have to move the meat around in the casing and then readjust as needed to fill it and just twisting. So it's just towards me, away from me, towards me away from me towards me and so on so once I've done a whole string then I lay them on this rack on this uh, tray you want ideally you'd want to hang them um, but you sort of need a cold room or a sealed room that's the right temperature to do that and we don't have that so um, I am going to what I do is I lay them out on these trays touching as little as possible and then 
stick them in the fridge for 24 hours to, so the skins will dry and shrink back to the to the meat um, if there's any really large bubbles or air bubbles in them you should prick them and and break them so that the uh, skins the casings suction back into the meat uh, but I just lay them out on the rack with as little touching as possible and we layer them in the fridge we don't have a whole lot of fridge room either so you know we do what we can have it all there and as much as possible let the skin set onto the the meat and it doesn't it doesn't really make any difference to the edibility edibleness of the edibility edibleness whatever that is to the sausage it's just about aesthetics and the way it cooks so if it shrink the more it shrinks back to the meat the less likely it is it's gonna burst while you're cooking it so that's one string and now I just have to do the other strings and get them all pieced like this as, a, as you can see I've, it's not very even it doesn't really matter we just I just do it by hand as I go I'm gonna flick this fan up a bit higher and see if we can help with flies and then yeah so I'm just gonna uh, string them all and then we'll get them in the fridge to set for the night afternoon so it's been 24 hours since we filled the sausage casings um, so I'm gonna grab a tray out of the fridge and give you a look what they look like uh, after that 24 hours in the fridge and this is what they look like so they have suctioned the skins have suctioned to the to the meat and they've sort of cured a little bit in the fridge for that time in that time and created a bit more of a sausage like look to them still got a few little air bubbles that I didn't get which is fine but they um they're now not tacky they they don't there's no texture no stickiness to the outside or anything else it's all dried and ready to go so these can be cooked straight away or sometimes we put them in the smoker or what we generally do is we batch them up into uh, sizes for the um, for meals and then we vacuum seal them up and freeze them and then as we want to eat them we just have to pull a bag of them out at a time I also cooked up a bunch of the pork with some cabbage and carrot and some uh, spices and stuff and this is going to go into spring roll pastries and I will bake the spring rolls and I cooked up the crumbles of what was left that we can get in sausage casings uh, there's a couple of trays of those and we will and I will um, split them up into meal size portions and vacuum seal we use those vacuum seal packs for making the meat and the base of a frittata or with a bit of gravy and potato a bit like the biscuits and sausage and gravy that Americans tend to eat um, but we do it with potato I think they call them home fries uh, potato done in the cast iron with the sausage meat and the gravy eggs sometimes on top um, it's good for pizza toppings as well it works quite well to use as a crumbled meat on a pizza or in a calzone uh, so plenty of things that I can do with it so it's easier if I pre-cook it and just bag it up and then all I have to do is pull it out of the freezer and it's ready to go so I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of making the sausages from scratch and if you have any questions please ask in the comments below and if you're interested in seeing more please subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to be notified when we put out more videos. See you next time!